In this video, we're going to make some very simple enemy AI. We're going to have our enemies roam around randomly, and if the player gets within range, they will switch into attack mode, chase, and attack him. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so let's check out some very simple AI. Now, the AI we're going to make here is a very simple state machine that can be easily expanded upon to fit whatever your game needs. So, for example, this is what I used on the top down shooter that I made recently. So, over here is an enemy, and I'm controlling my player. Now the enemy, as you can see, he's just roaming around randomly around his starting position. So just minding his own business, picking a random position. However, he's also searching for a target. So if I approach him and I go within the target range, there you go, you can see that he's now pointing at me and chasing me. So he's currently on the chase state. And if I let him get within attack range, there you go, within the attack range, he starts shooting. And if I go away, he continues chasing and shooting and so on. And now if I reach way too far, there you go, he gives up on chasing and goes back into his starting position and then again back into roaming for random positions. So just like this over here, you can already see some pretty basic AI. I've been using this type of state-based AI for many years now and it's very easy to make and easy to adapt to fit whatever needs your game has. Again, you can see it in action in the top-down shooter game I made recently. The enemies there have a fine target range, attack range and an idle state. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Alright, so this is our goal, let's get to it. Okay, so here's our starting scene. I have my player character that I can move around, I can shoot, and over there is an enemy and I can shoot and kill him. So essentially this base scene is taken from the top-down shooter I made, so go check out that video and play that game. The weapon aiming was also covered in a previous video, as was the particle system. Alright, so let's handle our enemy. Here on the scripts folder, let's create a new C -sharp script, and we're going to call this the enemy AI, and let's drop it on top of the enemy prefab. Okay, so first let's make him just roam around randomly. Now we want him to roam around randomly around his starting position. So first, that means we need to store the starting position. So let's make a private void start and we store a vector3 for our starting position and we set this on our start. Alright, we have our starting position. Now let's make a function to get a random roaming position. Okay, so here let's get a random position around the starting position. So for that I can go use the utilities. As long as you can download the utilities for free from unitycodemonkey.com and in the utilities, I have the utils class and get random direction. So here is that function in case you want to make it yourself. As you can see, it just does a random on the X and a random on the Y and normalizes the vector. So this returns a random vector with random on the X and Y. So using this, we get a random direction. Now we apply this to our starting position. So starting position plus a random direction multiplied by a random distance. Okay, so here's a function to get a random roaming position. We get a random direction multiplied by a random distance applied to our starting position. Now, in order to handle movement, as you can see here on the prefab, the enemy has this script to handle pathfinding movement. This is a simple movement code that uses the pathfinding that we made in a previous video. So it calculates the path and then simply follows it. And we have a simple function to set the move to position. So let's use this. So back in our AI script, on start, let's also calculate a roaming position. So we get the wrong position and we get a random one using our function, all right. And then we have a private void update. And then on update, we move towards our position. So we need a reference to our pathfinding movement script. Alright, so we have a field for our pathfinding movement script. We grab it on awake, so we do a simple get component. Then on start, we calculate a new roaming position. And on update, we're going to go into the pathfinding movement script and we call the function to move to our roam position. So this will calculate the pathfinding and move the character towards it. Then all we need to do is do a simple distance check. So 
we do a if do a vector three dot distance between our current position, so transform dot position. So the distance between our position and the roam position, we test if it's under a certain amount. So if it is under a certain distance, then that means we have reached our roam position. So when we do, let's calculate a new roam position. All right, just like that. So with this, the enemy should be roaming around randomly. Let's test. Okay, so here we are, and yep, there's the enemy just walking around. There you go, he reached that position, went to that one, now he's going to that one, and now to that one there, and we can see the pathfinding. And there you go, he's going there, now he's going there, now he's going there, and yep. So he's correctly getting a random roaming position every time he reaches one. Right, awesome. So now that we have him roaming around, let's make him chase the player. So back in our AI script, we want the enemy to check if the player is within a target range, and if so, then we start chasing him. So for that, let's make a function called findTarget. Now here, let's keep things simple and make him only able to target the player. Now the player class has a nice static instance field that we can use. So back in our AI, we can do a simple distance check to test if the player is within the target range. So we do a distance check, and if the player is within that range, then the player is within our target range. So when we do, then we want the enemy to start chasing the player. So this is where we need to handle a basic state machine. So over here on our update, we have the code to roam around randomly, and now we need the code in order to chase the player. So here, let's just set the move position straight into the player position. So just like this, he won't chase the player. However, obviously, we cannot run both states at the same time, so let's go all the way up here, and we're going to define a private enum. In case you don't know, an enum is a data type where you can have specific named values, so it's perfect for defining states. So here we just call it our state, and for the various states, let's have roaming, and then chase target. So those are our two possible states. Then let's also store a field to store the current state, so private of type state and call it state. And by default, let's set it to roaming. So now we have our simple state variable and on our update, we can do a very easy switch. Switch on our state. And then we do a case roaming. So when we are in the roaming state, we're going to run this code. And case we are on the chase target state, then we run this code. All right, so that's it. Over here, we have a very basic state machine. So our logic depends on our state. All we need to do is actually change the states. So over here on our find target, first, we're going to look for a target whilst we are roaming. So while roaming, we're going to call find target. And then when we do find a target, let's modify the state to be state.chase target. All right, that's it. Let's test. Okay, so here we are. And there's the enemy roaming around randomly. And now as I approach him, and when I get within range, yep, there you go, he's now chasing me and moving straight towards me. And just like that, and now he will never let go. All right, awesome. So we have correctly made two different states with two different behaviors. Now that we have this working, let's handle enemy attacking. So back in our enemy AI code, over here when we have our state whilst chasing the target, let's see if he's within a certain attack range. So again, we're doing the same thing, just a simple distance check, and if he's within attack range, then we want to attack him. And now here the enemy also has a script that handles all the aiming and shooting. So we're going to use that external script the same way we did for the movement. So that one, it's a script which implements I aim shoot animes. Again, how this is implemented isn't relevant for the AI. So when you make your own games, you should make sure that you keep things nicely separated. So for example, the pathfinding movement doesn't care about the AI and this animation does not care about the AI. So they are all completely separate. So we get that component. And now in there we have two functions, one to aim at a target and one to shoot. So whilst we are chasing, let's simply set the aim target to be on the player position. So we're constantly going to be aiming towards the player whilst we're chasing him. And when he is within attack range, then let's call shoot target. 
So we shoot again towards the player position. And when we do, let's also stop moving. Okay, let's see. Okay, here we are, and there's the enemy just roaming around randomly. All right, now as I approach, he's going to go from roaming into chase, and yep, there you go, he's currently aiming at me, all right? So let's let him get closer, and let's see if he shoots, and yep, there you go, he shoots. And as you saw, that is quite insane, but yep, there you go, he is shooting. All right, so let's solve this issue. Now, the issue is that he's essentially shooting a bullet every single update. So if the game is running at 100 frames per second, then the enemy is shooting 100 times per second. So here, let's implement a very simple fire rate. Now, this would normally be built inside a proper weapon class, but just for testing, let's make something very simple in here. So all we need is really just a float in order to know when is the next time that the enemy can shoot. So a float for the next shoot time. So we go all the way down here, we test if he's within attack range, and if so, then we also test if the next shoot time is valid, so we compare it with time.time. .time. So if the time is past the next shoot time, then we want to shoot him, and once we do, we want to set the next shoot time equals time.time .time plus a certain fire rate. Alright, so there it is, very simple code, let's test. Okay, so here we are, and let's approach him, and there you go, he's now aiming, let's wait, and there you go, now he's shooting at a much more reasonable pace. Still too fast, but yep, there you go, as soon as I go away, he's chasing, when he gets within attack range, he attacks. So, very simple, and very nice. Alright, awesome. Now, over here, I have modified the fire rate to be extremely slow, and this will expose an issue, so if we go, and yep, there you go, see how he's doing, he's essentially cancelling the shooting animation. So it shows for just exactly one frame, and then he goes back into moving and moving on top of me. So the issue is the animation isn't being fully played, so let's fix that. Now in order to fix that, in this case it's extremely simple. So here on the shoot target function, I already have an action that gets triggered when shooting is complete. Now this is obviously going to depend heavily on how you set up your animation system, but in here I can simply use this action in order to modify our states. So you can go up here and make another state. This one is going to be called the shooting target. So this state will be active whilst the enemy is shooting the target, so whilst the animation is playing. And then on update, that is essentially a dummy state. So case state dot shooting target, we do nothing. So while we are inside this state, then we are simply waiting to go back to another valid state. So in here, when we shoot, we set the state equals state dot shooting target. And when the animation finishes, then we go back into our chase target. So let's see how this works. Okay, so here we are, let's approach him, wait for him to shoot. And yep, there you go, now he plays the actual shooting animation instead of canceling it on the exact next frame. Again, this will depend on how you set up your animation system, but the takeaway here is that you can add states while a certain animation or different action is being performed. So whilst this state is active, then this enemy's AI will not be doing anything. All right, so all that's left is to handle our stop chase logic. So here we are chasing the target, all right. We are testing for the attack distance and shooting him, okay. Then let's do another distance check. So for here, again, we are doing a simple distance check. And if it is way past this distance, then we are too far and we want to stop chasing our target. So when we do, then we want to go back into our original starting position. So again, it's very simple. All we need to do is make another state. So let's call it going back to start. And then here, when we are too far, we're going to modify our state to be going back to our start. And then we have our case state going back to start. And we simply move back into our start position. So we move back into the start position. Then again, we do a distance check, much like this one. And when we get back to our start position, we simply modify the state back into roaming. All right, so there it is, very simple. Let's test. Okay, so here we are, and there's the enemy just roaming around randomly, so he's not aiming at me, he's completely idle. Now I approach, and there you go, he saw me, he's aiming at me, and if I get close, he starts shooting me, okay? And if I go way too far, there you go, he gives up and he goes back into his starting position. And once he reaches his starting position, yep, there you go, now he starts roaming around that position as well. Right? Awesome!
So here you can see how our enemy AI has some very basic, simple state machine. So the enemy roams around randomly. He tries to find a target within his range. If he does, then he starts chasing that target. Whilst chasing, he tries to shoot and attack the target. And if the target moves away way too far, then he goes back into his original starting position. So here in the code, as you can see, it's extremely simple. We just have our state enum for all of our various states. And we do different logic on our update based on the current state that is active. So roaming, we just pick a random position. Whilst chasing the target, we move towards the target. We test the distance. If close enough, then we attack him. If not, then we test the distance if it is too far. If so, then we modify into a state going back to the start, which goes back to the start and back into roaming. So again, here is in action. He's roaming around randomly. I approach, he sees me. Now he's moving towards me. When he's close, he starts shooting. And if he's way too far, he gives up and goes back. So this pattern with a very simple state machine is pretty much how I always do my AI. Everything that I do is just about expanding upon this base. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.